This is part two of uh, uh, Adam Asks. I don't know, we've got a piece of paper here. We thought we'd get through it in uh, yeah. two videos. It might be three. There might be another video coming later as well. But we're going to be here all afternoon. Essentially, what we've done is we've gone through our YouTube channel. We constantly put out um, content out there. Hopefully, you're enjoying it. We get comments back, and I, I, we, somebody always replies back to the comment. It's quite often least, a lot of these are. Always um, tries to. Yeah, and there's well, actually there's none. There's no no out of comments well, good. Well, okay. uh, over maybe a week or so. You know, I go on there every, every week or so. Now, some of the answers, we went back through them and thought, that's a really good thing, but it's kind of buried away. Yeah. So we're going to re-ask the question, because we know it's a popular one, and I'm going to answer it. And it's a little bit of a test for me, because Adam's got them printed out. That's actually from, from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, well, I hope I give you the same answer. Part two <laughs> of our repurposed content. Right. Good one. Okay. What's the so next one? How much do we yeah. charge to create a landlord business plan? We don't charge anything for that. Nope. Oh, okay, right, it's not a trick question. It's no, it's not a trick question. There's yeah. no trick question. Um, so, landlord business plan, we... Actually... Mm, go on, I'll tell you what. What is our landlord business I was going to say, plan? let's go a bit further. Mm. So, landlord business plan is a um, the one-page landlord success plan, as we call it. It's a, it's not marketing BS, it is a... We call it a wheel, and it's got spokes, and the idea is that you put every important issue that a landlord has on the spokes, and... You've got to keep them balanced. You can't just be really good at this and not very good at that. Otherwise, you haven't got a wheel. You've got to keep them balanced mm -hmm. so it rotates. That's that's the sort of the, the visual element of it, and it fits on a single piece of paper. Um, you can do that with any business. You can create a wheel and say all the important things in this business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The one-page plan is the spokes are the spokes that we know a landlord needs on their plan. So you don't have to think about the spokes. We know what's important. It comes from what's well, it's my hard-earned. Um, Every spoke is a mistake I've made. You know, this, yeah, is, this yeah. is something that I've, I've, I've it's done. It's a process we just refined and refined and refined. Yeah. So we did it. This business for the landlords.com has a one page business plan. There's layers to it afterwards about all the other stuff as well that you know, each spoke's got a page or a chapter even, sometimes or a spreadsheet or whatever. But you can stick it on one page. Uh, so yeah, the landlord business plan goes through uh, six different spokes. Um, we have what we call, a, well, Adam has and the team have what we call a success call. I suppose one of the things that, it's, it's not, land, landlords and people who ha, have conversations with us, um, you know, you're not gonna get a one page business plan after speaking to us for five minutes. You know, so it, it, it's something that evolves. Doing the one, well, can you remember how long it took for this business mm. for the landlords? It took us six months yeah. uh, of me to just refining it and refining it. So to create a success plan, you have to have a success call. And the very first call that we ever have with anybody um, just a little fact finder is a success call. It'll go through, you know what you ask you. Even yeah. if you, you start with your name and your address and who are you and what have you got, that's spoke one. It becomes totally. your financial dashboard. How many houses you got? Um, how, if it's zero, so okay, we'll zoom around there. That's, we need to find some more houses for you. I guess that's why you're calling. And then when we're going, speaking to you maybe you know, five years later, we go around the spokes in the same way. It's a running track and it becomes the agenda for the conversation and it keeps adjusting and changing. Um, you might never draw the plan up like we do. We draw it as a wheel and a spoke. Might not be. Mm. Might just be six different bullet points. But the success plan behind it has got a success call. And uh, every time anybody speaks to you, it's, it's part of the plan. You know, if you are a landlord or a tenant and you're calling up about a leaky tap, that is spoke two on the plan, and we know how we're dealing with it. And it's all consistent because of that. So, um, cool. The initial, you know, there's no charge for it. It's no. part of our business. I mean. Adam will have that conversation with you if you never become a client. So if you become a client, yeah, you'll a bit get more full use of it. It's not just for someone who's starting out, who thinks they need to create a business plan because they're going to be mm. buying their first house. Um, it's just for someone who's got an existing portfolio um, and you want to just make sure that you're happy that you're managing everything in that portfolio mm. properly and as, 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 as efficiently as possible. We can look at your existing portfolio and help boost it, help optimize it. That could be part of the plan. And then we could discuss buying or selling stuff. I think that's spoke four um, yep. when we get round the wheel. Um, so it's really it's for anyone who's a landlord or anyone who wants to be a landlord. There'll be a link in the <coughs> description of this video with a, a link to my calendar. You can book a call with me at, your, at a time that suits you. Uh, feel free to, to book in and have a chat. Um, right, I think we've answered that. Um, now this one's a bit more um, specific, mm -hmm. but it's going to relate to some people. So um, this person said, I bought a house through auction using a bridge, a bridging loan. Uh, I'm now halfway through the renovation. How soon can I pay this bridging loan off and how? 
using which technique? So halfway through a renovation oh, oh, on a house they built on a bridge. the question. Yeah. It's like a, ooh. Yeah, it's risk, isn't it? Ooh. Don't ask that question. I mean, you should know that answer. Yeah. You bought the house already. Please tell me you saw <laughs> the house as well before you bought it with a bridge. So, never get into something before you know you're gonna, how you're going to get out of it. Mm. Yeah. Um, before you buy the house, Scary. answer that question. Um, so the, the, the question is, how soon? Six months, probably. There's some lenders that will... So you bought it, whether you buy it in cash or with bridging finance. Um, most lenders who are going to do a refinance, so you already own it, they're going to put another mortgage on it, that's called a refinance, mm -hmm. are going to want to see that you have owned it for at least six months. So I hope your bridge is nine months at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any bridge Risky that I are. take on has got a, it, it, usually 12 months and has got a open ended if you want to. And, and some bridges are, let's say it's a six months, but month seven, eight, nine, they start to be more expensive and they get really poisonous towards the end. So that's a bit of a. Yeah. I've seen landlords have their house taken off and then yeah. it got expensive because they couldn't refinance out. So, how do you refinance out? You, you go to a really good mortgage broker and um, um, get it sorted out. A really good mortgage broker, that, that, that's very ambiguous. Somebody that deals with buy to lets all the time and they know the pitfalls. I'd be worried that um, after a renovation, if you're trying to do it really quickly, uh, a damp, a damp the doors come up. You know, you've just put hundreds of litres of water, of paint, a desif, all sorts of stuff into a building. It's got to dry out and usually mm. it takes a couple of weeks, months sometimes for that initial renovation to dry out. I've seen false, not, not false, they're damp meter readings, but it's like, oh, it's brand new plaster. It's never going to go down. But the surveyor doesn't know that. I've also seen, um, Seen that happen hmm? um, with a couple of clients. Uh, the, the mortgage survey after eight months, he's put a damp meter on the wall. He's come back and said it needs damp works doing to it. You need mm -hmm. to get a, a quote and have the works carried out by an insurance backed yeah. um, mm -hmm. company. And like, it's a brand new renovated yeah, house, yeah. right? So we've gone, look, that's just a, a bad survey. It's a silly comment. Do another one. Go to a different lender and guess what? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. They didn't say anything about yeah. it. It just went straight yeah. through. It's yeah. really a, a, weird. A newly renovated yeah. house can sometimes be a little bit hard to um, refinance because of that. Time of year, um, maybe as well. Yeah, but yeah sometimes. But anyway, um, we've digressed. Yeah, so, so, but, um, yeah, so. bought a house for auction, and I'm not halfway through a renovation house soon. So the actual factual answer is the technique almost is you've got two options. You pay yeah. the bridge off with some money you already have in your bank, or you apply for a mortgage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The, 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 the technique. <laughs> well, you get someone else to pay off, lend you the money, and pay it off. Yeah, but that's what you can do. Yeah, but, um, uh, but definitely, <coughs> I would just to get don't don't get in that situation. Don't be wondering halfway through mm. before you buy it. Check with your mortgage broker. How am I going to get off this? Well, there's these five products. I can't guarantee these five products will be available in six months' time or nine months' time. But the likelihood is some of them will be. And yes, I've done a decision in principle, and you're eligible, or the property's eligible for this. So. Um, yeah, that's the answer cool. to that one. All right. Okay, good. Right, we've got time for one more, I think. Mm -hmm. So how can landlords with over 10 properties get finance for their portfolio? Mm -hmm. Can it be restricted? Mm. So, yeah, a lot of people think, you know, once I've got, do I need to get, you know, is there a limit of how many houses I can buy before I can yeah. get mortgages? Um, so how can landlords with over 10 get finance? Yeah, I, I used to worry about this, I remember. Um, that, what, 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 finance never ever runs out, ever. <laughs> Um, no, there'll always be some uh, other doors open. Door yeah. opens. There are some lenders. When you first start out as a landlord, in the research that your mortgage broker will do for you, you'll notice it says maximum lending limit. Maybe they'll only lend five million pounds to one landlord, or two million pounds, or they'll only allow you three houses or five houses. Um, so the, typically, the high street lenders they've got those restrictions, and the buy to let brands are the high street lenders. So Birmingham Mid Eyes is a Lloyd's group. They'll only allow you three or five or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's restricted. Um, then there's another tier. So what would be TMWs? I think TMW is owned by Nationwide. Nationwide, yeah. yeah. Um, so they'll allow you. I think it's five or ten, and that's changed recently. I don't know. I think I think it's ten now. Uh, and then they'll start looking slightly more closely. Um, as soon as you go from four houses to five houses, you are um, technically, or uh, it would be by the the, the, the council of mortgage lenders definition. Uh, a mortgage, sorry, a um, portfolio landlord, and there's a there's a sort of a tighter set of um, due diligence from the banks on you. As soon as you're a portfolio, they stress test your portfolio to make sure they're all all right. Up until that point, it's individual properties. Are they okay? But when they put them together, 
you can actually have, and you've seen it, you know, you've got three good houses you know, that, that yield really well and two duffers that don't yield really well and you can't buy your sixth house because those other two drag it down. We've seen that landlords mm -hmm. with valuable house in London and three small buy to lets but the valuable house in London doesn't rent for the right amount and therefore they can't buy the you know, seventh, eighth, and the next little buy to let. So having a well-balanced portfolio is important for all of these, but what, as long as you've got a well-balanced portfolio, as you grow, there are other lenders that will take care of you. Um, broadly speaking, they're all, <coughs> the, it's, it's absolutely a fact that the, 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 the cheapest lending you'll ever get is those first three buy to lets, but not sure. by much. Um, and Book a that, link yeah. in the description to talk to me if you need access to a really good mortgage broker yeah. I can recommend one she's fantastic yeah. but you'll never run right. out of lending no. in fact actually okay. I've noticed now you know more doors open banks I've never heard of you know yeah. pri private lending and yeah. uh, you know, private banks those kind of things okay cool Brill. next question okay um, should I save up for my own deposit for a mortgage or get startup a business loan to get going with my own capital without without my own, own capital, capital sorry should I save up for my own deposit for a mortgage or get startup business loan to get going without my own capital? This is a very personal opinion on mine. Yeah. Save up, work hard, save and invest. You won't get a mortgage anyway if your deposit is also a loan. You will if you lie, but don't. Yeah, so you, you won't. <laughs> you need your own money for a mortgage deposit or you need to borrow it from someone yeah. and then the solicitor and the mortgage broker will need to see who you borrowed it from and the transaction history and everything else. How about um, some words of wisdom from a old head that used to be younger that used to try this kind of stuff all the mm. time? Because you know, you, you're, you're young, you're impatient, you want to get on with it. Don't overstretch yourself. It, yeah. This whole thing's going to make your life easier and less stressful. Um, so... Save up, make it comfortable. Yeah, yeah. good advice. All right. all right, there you go. <laughs> so that's all we've got time for today. Yeah, we're going to keep reading through this list. We've we'll, got loads more. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll make mm. it the next part and the next part. So uh, yeah, bye for now. Thanks very much can for drag this out watching. For a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it's, hopefully you're going to find it useful. Um, yeah, we'll we'll give it the same title with part one, part two. Well, they're um, all genuine questions these that are people have asked us, rather like, than so. us trying to think yeah. up content you might like. Yeah. This is genuine stuff that people have have asked so so someone's got to like it right oh yeah like bye for now La oh yeah we should remember like, that. like it and mm. subscribe it please that, yeah. if you like the video like and if you want more or to see the next video subscribe apparently it helps algorithms yeah yeah bye for now go for it see ya